This episode of the HVAC School Podcast is made possible by our excellent partners, Carrier, Mitsubishi Electric Cooling and Heating. You can find out more by going to MitsubishiComfort.com. The UEI Hub Smart Kits with their thermo hygrometers, induct temperature and humidity probes, and their pressure probes, as well as the UEI WRS wireless scales. Great, great kit. You can find out more by going to UEITest.com. Also, Refrigeration Technologies, makers of the Wet Rag product, Viper Cleaners, Nylog, that has become so ubiquitous in all of my conversations, including my recent article on making a proper flare. You can find out more by going to RefrigTech.com, R-E-F-R-I-G-Tech.com, and you can get Refrigeration Technologies items, products, from TrueTechTools.com, T-R-U-TechTools.com, offer code GETSCHOOLED for a great discount. Also want to thank Air Oasis, makers of the Bipolar and Nano whole home air purification products. Quick mention to a couple other people who are not technically sponsors, but who are definitely products that I use and I'm very thankful to. Uh, Retrotech, who makes great blower doors and duct leakage testers. Rightsoft, you can find out more about Rightsoft by going to rightsoft.com. Rightsoft makes excellent software for doing manual J and manual D, duct design and load calculations. And then also to bizpal.org and Patrick Long for helping me do some recruiting lately. Bizpal.org has an excellent system for finding new employees. So if you're in a business that is in need of some help, take a look at bizpal.org. Meet ZoomLock, the 10-second flame-free refrigerant fitting from Parker. Reduce labor costs by 60% with no brazing, no flame, and no fire spotter. Discover how ZoomLock can help you be more efficient and productive. Visit zoomlock.com for more information. He's creepy, in a good way. Brian Orr. Here to Heidi Hody. Thanks for listening to the HVAC School Podcast, the podcast that helps you remember some things that you might have forgotten along the way and also helps you remember some things that you forgot to know in the first place. I am Brian. And I went down to Austin, Texas. Never been to Austin before. Flew down to Austin, Texas and got to hang out with a bunch of really great people at the Humid Climate Conference. This episode, as well as the next one, which is with Corbett Lunsford, were both done live at the Humid Climate Conference. And so they're a little different than our usual episodes, but because they were done live, you're going to hear some background noise because we were doing them right there. The Humid Climate Conference is an absolutely great conference. Big thanks to Positive Energy and the Building Science Podcast for helping put that on. Christoph over there, I met Miguel, and then I also met Sean Harris, who is who we are interviewing for this podcast. Sean is the proprietor of AeroSeal Austin, and he's also a tester for Positive Energy. Positive Energy is an independent HVAC design firm that helps design some really high-performance systems in Austin, Texas, and Sean is a practitioner. He's a guy who actually does it. And it's nice to talk to people who are trainers and educators, but it's also nice to talk to people who actually do this work. Before we get into it, though, because we are going to talk about AeroSeal, we're talking about sealing ducts from the inside out. I want to say I was skeptical about this product when I first heard about it, but I have since changed my mind. We don't do it at Kalos, so I can't speak personally from the experience that we have. But the question of why you would want to do it, I think it's important for us to answer that real quick. And the reason why you want to seal ductwork so it's really tight is so that you can control what's coming in and out of the house, obviously. So you don't want to be sucking in attic air and then dumping it into the house. But you also want to control the pressures in the home. So if you have supply duct leakage, which is common, if you have supply duct leakage, then what occurs is is that the house tends to go under negative pressure because you're losing some of that air to the attic. And when the attic or crawl space or wherever the ducts happen to go, I'm used to Florida and in Florida, everything's in the attic. But if you're blowing air out of your supply duct into the unconditioned space, then that air has to come from somewhere, which means that the house then goes under negative pressure which just isn't good, especially not good for controlling relative humidity. We would much rather that you bring in outside air through something like a dehumidifier or an ERV rather than bringing in outside air because you have imbalanced pressures and you're sucking it into the wall cavities and all that because that can be some pretty nasty, nasty air, especially when you're in a humid climate like I am here in Orlando or like we were at when we were there in Austin or Houston, a lot of other places. Pretty much anytime you're on the Gulf Coast all the way up through sort of the eastern seaboard, there's a lot of moisture issues. Even in a place like Ohio, there's a lot of moisture issues. So anyway, this whole duct sealing thing becomes even more important when you're really trying to keep your pressures balanced or even positively pressurized inside the home. In fact, in humid climates, it's better to even positively pressurize. 
So obviously leaking supply air in the attic is a bad thing because you're losing energy just because you're leaking that air out. But it's even worse when you start to talk about what happens when you put the house under negative pressure. So that's why we're talking about it. And so here we go. Sean Harris with Positive Energy and AeroSeal of Austin talking about sealing your ducts from the inside out with AeroSeal. All right. So we are here at the Human Climate Conference in Austin, Texas. I'm sitting here with an Austinite, Sean Harris with AeroSeal of Austin and Positive Energy. So thanks for sitting down with me for a second, Sean. Thanks for having me, Brian. Yeah. Well, having you, you're having me because I'm here in Austin ah, with you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks for having me. Okay. So I wanted to just go over real quick. We're going to talk more about AeroSeal and some podcasts coming up soon, but I wanted to just get your kind of quick overview of what AeroSeal is and how you use it because you're actually a practitioner and that's what I like people who actually do this stuff every day. Cool. I started out in the building science industry, testing homes and looking at duct leakage and how it impacts both new construction and pre-existing homes. And I realized that there was a major problem out there that HVAC companies were struggling to seal their ducts, even in brand new homes. But if you go into older homes, it was also just as bad, even worse. You go back to metal ductwork that had no fluid applied sealants whatsoever and now is inaccessible due to a low pitch roof or sheetrock in the way or things like that. And I saw this product, AeroSeal, and I was very skeptical. I didn't think that it was going to work, didn't think that it was going to last. And so it took, I don't know, a year and a half or so before I really looked at the product closer. I went and watched an AeroSeal being performed and I felt the product and felt how it maintains its elasticity and how it can stick to two different services and really sort of maintain that hold for years and years. Anyway, so that's what sort of got me into doing it. AeroSeal, if you guys don't know, is a product that can seal up air conditioning ductwork similar to fix a flat for a car tire. So it automatically just goes and finds the leaks and seals them. Basically, we do that by isolating the duct system. So we put some closed cell foam plugs in at the unit as well as at the supply and return registers. So we've isolated just the duct system. We then pressurize it introduce an aerosol into the pressurized system right. and then the airflow goes around circulates it and then wherever there's a leak the aeroseal is drawn towards that spot and it just starts building on itself and sealing the leak and it can seal leaks up to five eighths of an inch wow a couple things to address right away because the cartoon in our head i think we imagine this stuff like going into a duct and like covering all of the surfaces inside the duct when i first heard about aeroseal that's how i imagined it but that's not actually how it works Correct. So it doesn't coat the ductwork. I'm lucky for me, the sealant is very expensive. And so I'm actually happy that it doesn't coat the ductwork. But yeah, if there is a crazy amount of leakage in the system, sometimes the bottom of the ductwork gets a little tacky, but there is no coating of it. It just goes to wherever the leaks are and seals them up. Got it. So I'm kind of imagining, because it's a pressurized duct system, it can't go out of the duct system. The air is only escaping through the leaks. Correct. And so it kind of bonds as it hits that low pressure area and kind of bonds right there at those points. Exactly, yeah. So we already mentioned fix-a-flat, and I think a lot of technicians are rolling their eyes like, oh, geez, fix-a-flat. And then we also talk about internal leak sealants for refrigerant systems, I think also works similarly where you have that attraction to the edge surfaces and the attraction to each other is what bonds, but it's only at that leak point. It's not like it's gumming up the ductwork somewhere. So just to kind of give your credentials, though, because you, it's not like you decided one day, hey, I just want to start doing aerosol. You had done a lot of testing on systems prior to that, and so you actually saw the demand. So what type of testing had you done prior to getting into aerosol? Yeah, so I first started working with a company called Positive Energy, and it's a building science company that now predominantly does integrated mechanical design, and so they do manual J, manual D, manual S, and things like that, but they also start out as testing houses. That's how we got our start, looking at building envelope assemblies, looking at duct systems, looking at how the house functions as a system of systems. From there, we realized that testing houses, testing the duct leakage in particular, was a major issue that sort of affects all the other systems in the house. Right. And so then in the process, you were telling me this earlier, like in the process of doing this duct leakage testing, you end up bumping into a lot of circumstances where it's like, what do I do? Right. In some cases you can seal it manually, but in a lot of cases you don't have that option. I mean, there's just not a good way to get to the ductwork. 
correct. Oftentimes, it's especially back in the 70s and things with low pitch roofs and fur downs that have the ductwork in them. There's no way to access the ducts other than to take down sheetrock. So when I'd be going in doing these sort of energy audits on older homes, I'd measure the duct leakage and it was excessive. And I would say, yeah, your only option here is to take down sheetrock and that's really invasive into what's going on inside the house and also expensive and aeroseal just seemed to be the solution. It's not by any means a fix-all. This is not to put a band-aid on things. The gray mylar flex from the 80s, we turn down a lot of work where people are like, oh yeah, come in and seal my ducts. This is not the answer for every single problem. Duct replacement is important. Good quality work is important. Aeroseal duct system I don't think is going to last another six months or something. That's not what I do. I'm about doing good quality work. You're in the business of doing aeroseal, but you're all also in the business of designing really good duct systems as well. So it's not like you're interested in just aero sealing everything when it's not the right solution for a particular problem. Correct. And oftentimes ducts are undersized. Both supply and return duct work is undersized and sealing it just makes those problems worse. So looking at the whole system, not just looking at selling a job and doing something for somebody, but actually improving their circumstances is what I'm after. One thing you had mentioned is that you will, in some cases, manually seal a system. And if it's accessible, often I think you do that anyway. And then you'll retest and find that it's still significantly leaky, right? Correct, yes. So there are times where I'll go in and we'll do a duct blaster on a system. And there'll be, let's just say, 250 CFM of leakage. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get all that. And there's probably a good 60 CFM at the unit that I can tape up. And so we can really knock out this leakage without needing to do much aeroseal. And I'm surprised at how much leakage is left. I know where the leaks are. I get to see aeroseal leaking out of a lot of different places. And it's given me a lot of experiences on where the leaks are. And I just can't access everything all the time. And that's what I really like about aeroseal is in conjunction with hand sealing, you can really just get all of the leaks. Get it all, yeah. So one thing that they talked about a lot at the conference, the Humid Climate Conference, is indoor air quality, obviously. But one thing that came up quite a bit, and especially in one talk, was how we really don't want ozone inside unless there's a reason for it. And a lot of indoor air quality products do put off ozone. In fact, AeroAces even will tell you that their nano product does put off a little ozone. Most, if not all, PCOs put off a certain amount of ozone. PCO stands for photocatalytic oxidation. But Aeroasis makes a product called the Bipolar Ionizer that does not create ozone. The Bipolar Ionizer splits moisture in the air into positive and negative ions, and those positive and negative ions go out and they bond to particles in the air, and it really helps reduce particles. It does help with odors, and it does not create ozone. So we really like the Bipolar Ionization product. It's easy to install. You just install it on the side of the blower. It's very well built. It has no moving parts lasts a really long time. There's no bulbs to change or anything like that. And so it's a nice product if you have a customer who's interested in getting started with some advanced indoor air quality, air purification type products. So remember Air Oasis and their bipolar ionization air purifier. You can find out more by going to aeroasis.com. One more company I want to mention to you is Refrigeration Technologies. You can find out more about them by going to refrigetech.com. And a product that I want you to be aware of is their wet rag product. And how wet rag works is it's essentially just a little canister. It has a screw on top, a real nice kind of compact little canister. And inside there is hard to explain, but if you remember the old putties that we used to use in order to help protect items when we're brazing. It's kind of like that, but it's almost like moon sand. I don't know if you've ever played with moon sand with your kids, but it clings together and it has some moisture content to it. And it really helps protect like line dryers or accumulators, compressors, service valves, expansion valves, things that you really need to make sure that you're not going to damage the internal parts. And you also want to make sure you're not going to burn the paint. Wet rag is a really nice product. And when you're done with it, you just take it off, put it back in the canister and you can rehydrate it with just a few drops of water, even if it starts to dry out. Really nice product made by a very good company. I'm a big fan of refrigeration technologies. You may notice that I'm really going for U.S. companies where the founders are still involved in the businesses. Refrigeration Technologies is that way. Air Oasis is that way. Companies that invest in the trade and who are making really good products. And I'm very happy to be working with refrigeration technologies. I see them as sort of the pinnacle of chemical manufacturers in the HVACR space. They were started by a technician many years ago because he saw a need to make some great products. And I'm very thankful to them for the investment that they make in the trade. So again, find out more by going to refrigetech.com.
All right, so you just said something that I want to hear more about. You see a lot of leaks. You know where a lot of the leaks are. Give me, like, maybe the top two or three places that you see air leakage regularly. Yeah, so it depends on the duct design, but it always leaks at the connections, right? So on flex duct, for example, people think that not using fluid-applied sealants where the flex duct connects to a starting collar is acceptable and I see a lot of leakage at those points. It doesn't look like it because there's a Panduit strap on there that's pretty tight. Right. Typically there's a, a circular starting collar that sometimes ovalizes and you don't know it. What's cool about AeroSeal is that it's like a fog that goes in and so when we have really leaky systems this fog comes out into the attic and we get to see where the fog generates from and that oftentimes it's those connections that we see it. You talk about the fog. Are there ever issues with that getting on furniture or anything inside the house? Do you have to protect for that? Sometimes we do. What I mean by that is air seal stays suspended for about 20 minutes or so in the air. And in that time, we have air scrubbers. We have fans that we can put in windows and things like that. Air seal has to come out of the leak in order for us to actually seal the hole. And so sometimes we do end up fogging out a room or something like that. But we've got plenty of ways to get the fog out of there before it settles. We do often put down sheets of things over furniture, couches, expensive artwork, things like that. Get protected just in case. Okay. So if you were doing this like at the Louvre in France, you would cover the Mona Lisa, that sort of thing? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. We would. Or just remove it altogether. <laughs> Probably make more yeah. sense. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I want to mention Positive Energy. It's been great meeting you. It's been great meeting Christoph. Really a great company. I think there's probably going to be some of you out there who are in the kind of the high-end air conditioning side of things where you need to have things designed, really well designed, and maybe that's not your forte. I would strongly recommend that you look them up and find out what they do. They're just great people. And they have an excellent podcast, the Building Science Podcast, so take a listen to that. It's really good quality podcast, a lot of great content. I would suggest listening back a couple episodes to, uh, there's one that's titled Architectural Yogurt. That was a very interesting episode. I enjoyed that quite a bit. I may actually have that guy on HVAC school here soon. But yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. And yeah, AeroSeal sounds like a pretty interesting thing. One other thing that I will add in closing here, when I first heard about AeroSeal, because AeroSeal used to have a relationship with Carrier, I don't know exactly how that worked, but I heard about it years ago, and it sounded like bogus to me. Like, when I first heard about it, I'm like, ah, whatever, this doesn't work. But since that time, Bill Spohn is a big fan of it. I don't know that he's done it in his current house, but I know his partner, Eric, has done it on his house. Uh, and then Jim Bergman had it done on his house as well. And you know those guys aren't going to back something unless it actually works. And they speak very highly of AeroSeal. So I really, I believe in it. I think it's something to consider for your business if you're in a position where you run into these type of circumstances where you need to solve these problems. So Cool. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for having me, Brian. I yep, appreciate yep, it. Yep, it's great. Thank you. All right, big thank you to Sean Harris. Thank you once again to Positive Energy for putting on the show. I know I keep mentioning this, but I was just really impressed by the Human Climate Conference. They did a really nice job with it. It's great to meet people who are doing good work, who are excited about the work that they're doing. If you ever need some really advanced HVAC designs done, say you work on a really big custom home or something and you need some consulting or some designs, I would definitely suggest that you look up Positive Energy and you see the work that they're doing and maybe hire them if you have a job that requires it. If you haven't already, check out the Building Science Podcast that's put on by them. They do a nice job with it. Also, if you haven't heard our other podcast, you can find our other excellent podcast on the Blue Collar Roots Network by going to bluecollarroots.com and another similar show, a show that kind of covers some of the same sorts of topics in a little bit different style is Bill Spone and the Building HVAC Science Podcast. So take a look at that. I don't know if you're aware of this, but when the sun, yeah, the actual sun in the sky, when he was in his 20s, the son's parents came up to him and said, Son, you need to go to college. And the son said, Why? I have like 27 million degrees already. <laughs> All right, thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time on the HVAC School Podcast. Thanks for listening to the HVAC School Podcast. You can find more great HVACR education material and subscribe to our short daily tech tips by going to HVACRschool.com. If you enjoy the podcast, would you mind hopping on iTunes or the podcast app and leave us a review? We would really appreciate it. See you next week on the HVAC School Podcast.